I love Ratchet & Clank. That and Zelda are my two favourite gaming franchises. I remember the day I got Ratchet & Clank 1 back when I was around 4. My dad was buying Final Fantasy X for my older brother, so he had to buy me a game too. Lo and behold, I saw this box art and knew I had to get it. Since I was really young, I had to be in bed early, meaning I only got to play the first few levels before bed. But that memory will forever stick with me. I know Novalis like the back of my hand, and Ratchet and Clank 2016 threw me straight into my memories, and it was like how I remembered playing the original game. When the game released back in 2016, I was absolutely over the moon. Who would have thought a new Ratchet game on the PlayStation 4 with a tie in movie that, let's be honest, was completely unmemorable? Back then, I loved the game. But now after my second playthrough, a lot of issues have seeped in and my opinion has changed quite a bit. The game was a part of the play at home lineup of games and received a 60 FPS patch so there was no excuse for me not to go back to it before Rift Apart releases in June. So let's get the obvious out of the way. This game is fecking gorgeous. It was back then and it still holds up 5 years later and looks even better in 60 FPS. Just look at Ratchet's ears flowing in the wind. I swear I'm not a furry. Particle effects are crisp and it fixed the biggest issue in the original release, the frame rate drops. Ratchet can get hectic with a load of different weapons going at once, enemies exploding into balls, all while jumping around like a lunatic, and even the PS4 Pro struggled with this. The PS5 however whips its yoke out and starts swinging it all over the game. Groovatron, Mr. Zircon, Proton Bomb and the Pixel Eyes are all going at once, and I didn't even see one frame drop. Insomniac are really showing how good they are technically with this, Miles Morales and Spider-Man PS4, so I can't wait for Rift Apart. One standout are the more open levels like Gaspar. Now it's great because of the amazing gameplay, but also because there's no stupid movie cutscenes getting in the way. I love the structured natures of Ratchet games. A funny cutscene at the beginning and the end of a level, and then non-stop action in between. But in Ratchet 2016, the less cutscenes the better. I'm kinda hoping that Insomniac experiment will rift apart with some more open levels just to switch up the pace of it. As a gameplay experience, I still believe Ratchet 2016 is one of, if not the best Ratchet games. The only one in contention for me is Ratchet 1 for all. What an amazing game, I had so much fun playing that. No, I'm only joking, all for one isn't the one. Ratchet Gladiator is really the one in contention. Don't get me started on how good that game is. But back on track. When I'm in the heat of battle, I'm smiling from ear to ear. I'm taken back to when I was 4 trying to beat the original game, and it's the definition of comfort food. And it just makes me warm and fuzzy inside. But once the cutscenes start playing, my rose tinted glasses are shattered, and I come to the realization that they really affect with the overall feel of this game. It's no secret that one of the best parts of Ratchet is the characters and story. Not so much the actual plot, more the interaction and how everything unfolds. The announcer for Ratchet Gladiator, Quark just being Quark. One of my favourites being Skid McMarks, and finally the obsession with Britney Gears. Look, I don't judge. You do you. Or in this case, you do robot. Sorry, I'm really trying to inject some humour into these, but I'm really bad at it, so you just have to take what you're given. It's a personality that gels to Ratchet games together, and Ratchet 2016 seriously failed here. The biggest change is that Ratchet and Clank instantly like each other. I thought I liked this back in the day, but it's extremely shallow. Ratchet was an arsehole in the original, and it made their eventual friendship way better. I wonder what that info bot is for. Maybe it can replace you. But in this game, it's just, hi, I'm Ratchet. Hi, I'm Clank. And now we're best friends. Woohoo! I'm assuming they changed this because of some focus tested bullcrap, but it just came across terribly. Now, that was the biggest change. Now, let's talk about the worst change, and that is the movie. I went to see the movie on opening day, and I genuinely cannot remember a single scene from it. It wasn't bad, the animations were amazing, but everything else was just so bland and I think that's harder to do than you think. How in God's name do you take a world filled to the brim with different species, funny characters and weapons and make it boring? Well, somehow they did it with the movie, and it would have been an issue in the game if they just went with their own cutscenes. Insomniac have proved that they can make funny cutscenes and some of it is present in the game, but the majority of them are these stupid disjointed movie clips that absolutely ruin it. I would show you some, but I'm afraid that the video will get hit with a big C word, so I'll avoid it. Look, I'm just some guy. Why would you listen to me? Well, that's actually a good question. This video is kind of short, but I just wanted to talk a bit about the game. For the 60 FPS, go play this fucking game, just skip all the cutscenes. Turns out Rift Apart is a follow on from Into the Nexus, so I'll be doing a video on that before June, so keep an eye out for that. Thanks for watching, I really appreciate your time, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you all on the next video.